Atlantis, father of the abyss. What's going on guys? I hope you're all having a fantastic day. My name's YouTube and you're watching you. Today we're slipping into the abyss and painting the big daddy of the dark, Manus. And engage in jolly cooperation. This is one of the many Steamforged Mega Boss expansions for the Dark Souls board game and comes with all the necessary accoutrement to use as a boss for the game. Playing cards, health dials, mega tile, and of course, the massive model itself. Now you can see there's a lot of great detail on this model, lots of texture on the antler horn things, which we can use some nice dry brushing on. The only problem with Manus I've found is that he's just so fucking dark and I want to make it at least a bit more interesting than just a super dark model. So I think I'm going to use some pops of color on his corrupted arm. And of course we can add some cool red glows to the eyes dotted around his head as well. But first things first, let's get this bad boy primed. And I'm going to take you outside with me to give a refresher on priming. Welcome to the great outdoors gamers. I never do priming indoors. Spray cans are not good to use in enclosed areas without proper ventilation and masks, so outdoors is a good option for me. For dark models, I use Chaos Black Primer from Games Workshop. Then simply from a distance, just get a good even coverage of the primer and spray on all angles of the model. Leave to dry for a couple of minutes and then target the rest of the uncovered areas underneath. Back in the safe indoors, now, whilst I was priming, I actually thought it would be cool to design a kind of rocky base for him that matches the area that you fight him in. So using some of this crafting foam that I have left over from the walking mausoleum diorama and some ready mix polyfiller, we can make a pretty cool rocky base out of it. What I'm gonna do is just take this hobby knife and cut out some rough rock shapes in all different shapes and sizes and just start scattering them around the base to how I see fit. Then taking a little sculpting palette, I'm just gonna mix around this filler and start spreading it across the base. The reason I'm using filler and not PVA glue to stick the stuff down is because it's a lot thicker and you can make it look like uneven turf and then it'll harden and you'll get a good rocky surface after it's dried. Then you can start loading on the little foam rocks into the filler and then grab a little bit more of that filler and start filling in the gaps in and around the rocks so it's more seamless. And just to add some extra grit to this smooth filler, I'm just gonna sprinkle on some fine sand that I've got here and the filler should get some good grit to it. Then you've just gotta leave that to dry for anywhere up to 24 hours fully. And once it's dried, I'm just gonna prime the base again with some black. Now we can start painting. So taking some of this Dawnstone dry paint, I'm just gonna dust it all over his horn things. I was tempted to airbrush these and create some smooth gradients, but because it's got a lot of this scratched and gnarled texture on it, I decided that dry brushing would be pretty effective. And because it's primed with black, you can see that all these little deep cuts will remain black and we won't lose any of the texture with a light dry brushing. I'll also be dry brushing the same grey onto the base as well for the rocks. Then with Longbeard Grey, which is a much lighter dry paint, I'll use this to create the highlights on both the rocks and the horns, mainly targeting the tips and working down, don't take that out of context, so that we get the majority of the lighter tone at the top and blending down into the darker greys. And you can see already how we've generated this pretty accurate look from just two applications of different dry brushing. It's such a nice simple technique for anyone of any level and can be used to create really cool effects. Now his front horns are a bit more coloured, by the looks of things they have some browns and greens mixed in, so I'm going to start off by dry brushing some Rhinox hide to act as a dark brown base, and then moving up into some Zandri dust which will give that nice light highlight tone to it, making it look a bit more of like a normal antler. Because there's a lot of texture on this model, it's a good excuse to use some washes and some oils. So I'm gonna be taking some Agrax Earthshade and applying it to those colored horns we've done at the front, just to give some extra contrast and let it seep into the little cracks of the horns. So while the Earthshade dries, I'll take some Mornfang Brown to paint the spine and just give a liberal dry brush application to it. Then same as the horns, I'll just take some Zandri Dust and dry brush that onto the tips to generate the highlight tone and top it off with a garnish of Agrax Earthshade and C'est Magnifique. It's a good time to apply some Nuln Oil to the big horns as we wait for the Earthshade to dry on both the spine and the little horns. So with a shader brush, thin down the Nuln Oil with some water or contrast medium and apply it generously to all the main horns. This will give some extra contrast and gloss and give some extra pizzazz to the shadows in the little cracks as well. 
It does dull down the body of paint that we applied, but that's okay as once it has dried, we can go back over all the horns with some more dry brush highlighting to bring those lighter tones back out again. This is just a good way of building up layers and textures and tone. I've also taken some Agrax Earthshade and applied it all over the base as well to give some earthy brown shade to the great rocks. And here's how he's looking so far. Now that the Agrax Earthshade has dried on the front horns, I'm going to go over it with some of this Lauren Forest, which is a nice muted green tone, and it should be good for some added colour and depth to these horns. Only a very small amount because it's just a subtle green tone to add in. After the Null Noir has dried on the main horns, we're going to take some more of the Long Beard Grey onto a large dry brush and start adding back in those highlights we lost due to the oil. Then it's also good to go back over the rocks of the base with some more Long Beard Grey to bring the highlight tones back as well. With that, let's take a little look of how it's looking so far. Not too shabby. Now for the weapon. I'm going to take a small dry brush with some Rhinox Hide and brush on a thin base coat all over the weapon. Then boost up the brown with some mid-tone colour of Mournfang Brown and lightly brush on these lighter tones to the outer areas of the weapon, leaving the inner dips alone so they remain in the shadow. Then boost up even lighter tones with Zandri Dust again to create the highlight and apply that to even smaller areas within the Mournfang Brown to beef up the lighter tones. And that's how the weapon's looking. Slipping back into some more Agrax Earthshade and apply a wash of it all over the weapon. And while that dries, we can use some Mechanica standard grey paint and dry brush it all over his tail here. By the way, you don't have to use the exact paints for this that I use. I mean, the same goes for all the models that I do. If you're painting your own ones, any similar colours to the ones that I use are just fine as well. Or, you know, branch out, use your own. It's all up to you. These are the ones that I just found work best for how I'm doing it. So back to the Dawnstone, I'm going to use this to dry brush on some mid-grey tones to the tail, mainly focusing on the top side of it. Then back to old trusty Longbeard Grey, and this will act as our main grey highlight for the tail, and that will be applied all over the top of the tail again, building up these different tones of grey all over. Then shoot a hot load of Null Noil all over that stinky tail, and let it dry off. Now, while it's drying, I'm going to take some of this Armageddon dust, which is a texture paint with a similar tone to Zandri dust, but it has more of a gritty consistency. And I'm going to apply this as a dry brush highlight to the weapon once the Agrax Earthshade has dried completely. The gritty texture will just add a bit more dynamism to the highlight. Time to grab a wet palette. And onto this stinky little wet palette, I'm going to load up some of these pops of colour that we're going to be applying. Starting off with some Nagaroth Knight, followed by some Cantor Blue. Then some darker tones with Rhinox Hide and Abaddon Black. And then some lighter Rakarth Flesh and finally adding some more of this Mechanicus Standard Grey. Now for his big old slugger of a left arm, I'm going to mix together some of this Rhinox Hide and Mechanicus Standard Grey to around about a 50-50 mix, which should give us a dull, dark, brownish tone. And I'll use a thin down amount of this to act as the base all over the arm. And for his stinky little fat fingers, I'm going to take some Rakarth Flesh and just use that as the main undercoat. They seem a bit lighter to me, so that's why I'm going with this as a starting point, to which I'll probably darken down later on. Back to the 50-50 grey-brown mix again, and I'll use this as a base for the rest of the body as well, including his legs, his feet, and the arm that's holding the weapon, and then just use it for some extra dark tones to the bottom of his digits. Now it's hard to tell with this arm because he's so dark looking, but I decided that I would use some purple on the strands because it gives off that kind of nice corruption hue to it. So with a fine brush, I'm just gonna get this body of purple onto all the strands, leaving the skin and lower parts darker so it's not just all one flush tone of purple. Then I'm gonna accentuate this purple with some Cantor Blue, which is a nice rich royal blue tone, and I'm gonna paint random strands on the arm with it. As this is only to accentuate the purple and not dominate it, I'm just scattering it around and picking out random hairs. Now I decided to use some of this Nighthorn Gloom, which is a sort of bluey greyish wash, and it should just give a bit of a tint to the undercoat between the strands and tie the purple and blue together a bit. Now before I forget, I'm just going to slap some Corex White onto the wet palette so we can do some highlighting later. So taking a thin layer of Mechanica's Standard Grey, I'm just going to go over his fat little digits to bring the tone down a bit. Then give him a much needed manicure by adding some Abaddon Black to his nails. 
I'm going to quickly add some highlight tones to the body just by dry brushing on some Mornfang Brown. Now as you've noticed this model has required a bit of jumping around between different parts all over just because we're using lots of washes and oils and we're having to time it so that we can do other things while they're drying. So now that the Nighthaunt Gloom has dried I'm just going to apply some Nuln Oil to it to give us that much needed contrast on the arm. And again I've got to let that dry so I'm going to take some Lauren Forest and use that to add in some green tones to the head of the weapon just dry brushing on a very small amount like we did with the horns earlier on. Now for some edge highlighting to finish off the weapon, I'm going to slap on some Shbati Bone to the wet palette. And taking a precision brush with the bone paint, tilting it at an angle so it's kind of flat against the edges of the weapon, and lightly stroke that paint on. Not too hard, not too soft. Getting the balance between consistencies and amount of paint loaded onto the brush is key for edge highlighting and as you can see by this little blob here, I didn't do that too well, so just give that a little rub off there. And then just continue to gently apply these edge highlights across the weapon, picking out any points you think would generate the most light. And there we go, Mr. Grumpy Manus with his grumpy little weapon. Now with some Clorox White and a slightly overexposed B-cam, I'm just going to apply small little wisps of very bright highlight to the tail, just targeting the innermost parts of the hairs so that it gives a lot more contrast over the basic dry brush and null oil job that we did earlier. I'm going to do the exact same thing to the horns as well, the face, the teeth and the hairs on the body. Now moving back to the big old slugger arm after it's dried, I'm going to take some of this Corax white and mix it into the purple to generate a purple highlight and then use that to go over a bunch of these dark purple hairs to start generating that bright highlight tone. Making sure to not go overboard with the highlights, he is the father of the abyss you know. But just using it to target random hairs to bring them out a bit from the dark tones and generate a bit more dynamism and interest to this chonk. Same process for the blue that we did with the purple. I have some of this Thousand Suns blue paint, which is a sort of brighter tone than Cantor blue, but has a slightly more cyan tint to it, and just target again different strands of blue hairs to bring them out from the darker tones a bit more. And this is how he's looking so far. Now before moving on to his little red eyes, I'm just going to thin down some Abaddon Black to a glaze consistency and use that as a wash to go over all the shadowy regions to fatten up those shadows and bring back some stronger, darker contrast to the whole model. Focusing on all the little recesses and areas of shadow, using a larger brush for the shadows on the base as well as we want strong contrast on those rocks. Keeping the black thin is key to this as you don't want to fart a globule of black onto the paint job and ruin it and start over. So with that done, I'm going to grab my airbrush and I'm going to load in some Flesh Terrors Red Contrast Paint and spray it all over the eyes, which I painted earlier, but you didn't see that part because my camera stopped working. But yeah, I just painted the eyes white and I'm spraying the red contrast over the eyes and also creating a red halo around them. Then to make the brighter center point, I'm going to load up some titanium white ink and spray the center of the eyes, only letting a small amount of it spill onto the halo so as to not completely overwrite the red contrast. Now with the halo created, I'm going to go over it with some pyrrole red ink, which is a way brighter and more vibrant tone than the contrast paint. And with that done, I can take a mix of the Mephiston red paint and some Corax white and detail in some little reflections on the eyes just giving a soft highlight to each of them and then adding an even smaller reflection with some Corax white and it should create a pretty cool looking glowing red eye. And that's how he's finally looking. The big sleepy daddy of the dark, ready to tuck you in and give you a little forehead kiss. If you want to get tucked in with a little forehead kiss, go ahead and drop a like and subscribe and I'll get to tuck in. Now I'm just going to tidy up my area around him and hey presto, what do you know, it's Big Daddy Manus and he's giving us a show. I'm pretty happy with how he's turned out. Among many other Dark Souls bosses, he is a very dark design and very monochromatic in the best of parts. So I do like to try and find a way to add a pop of color for that kind of main focal element. And I think the blue and purple corruption color on his arm works for that kind of thing. But that about does it from me. I hope you enjoyed today's trip into the abyss. If I were ever to venture down into the depths with anyone, I would be honored if it were you. As ever, if you enjoyed today's episode, please drop this video a big fat thumbs up below. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. I'd love for you to join us. And with that, it's peace out from me, gang. Don't you dare go hollow.